Uh, give me my volley. Oh, I'll take Asol as well. <laughs> we can just play Asol in turn 7 then. <laughs> Wait, that's insane. Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I've got my first deck from the new expansion to showcase, and if you want an easy and strong place to start with Volley Bear, then I got you. This deck aims to play pretty slow, holding back resources in order to play defensively in the early to mid game, while getting ready to summon Volley as soon as possible, bringing down massive pressure. It uses a new ramping mechanic in the form of Sigils, which allow you to play really big units cheaper than normal. I want to run through my card choices, explain why they're in the deck, and give you the knowledge to pilot the deck yourself. The code for the deck will be in the description below along with the mobile decks link. Before I get into the deck profile, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and also consider visiting my Patreon if I've helped you on your lore journey. With that, I hope you enjoy this deck profile. And getting right into it, a very easy and natural pairing to Volley Bear, at least region-wise, is Targon, because of the inclusion of Seismic Shard in the game, giving this deck a very strong single target removal option. The regions work well together since there have been some recent Targon Freljord control decks anyways, so it's kind of natural, especially with like Cosmic Youngling coming in, Avalanche being a really good card from Freljord, and it just kind of works out. The main theme of the deck, which I'll talk about first, is to summon these cards called Sigils of the Storm. We want to be doing this in the early mid game, usually like turns 3 and 4 ideally. That way we can play big units cheaper, especially this one. So if we get Sigils of the Storm down, let's read it first. Sigils of the Storm stack. Titanic allies cost one less. Destroy me when you play a Titanic ally. Titanic allies are units that have 8 attack or 8 HP or both, as long as they have one stat point with 8 then they are a titanic ally in hand, so Rond is also one of those. So again, we want to play a Sigil on turn 3 and then another one on turn 4. That means our titanic allies cost 2 less, allowing us to play Rond on 5, which is really good because Rond summons 3 Sigils right away, meaning our next titanic ally will cost 3 less. You know who is a perfect mana uh, unit for that? Volley Bear at the 9 mana slot, that's actually perfect, because then Rond will be on turn 5, and Volley Bear can come down 3 turns earlier because of the 3 sigils to come down on turn 6, being a very strong curve. And of course we'll talk about what all the cards do, but that's basically like the gist of the strategy. Play defensive early, you can avalanche as soon as you want, and then play some sigils for 5, and then you can do like Rond 6, Volley Bear 7, or you can play a little bit faster and get Rond on 5, Volley Bear on 6, it just kinda, you know, depends on how the game is going and what the matchup looks like. So for the card specifically, we have Triple Cosmic Youngling being a very good defensive option, especially against aggressive burn strategies. 2 mana 1-4, round start, heal me and your Nexus 1. Really, really strong, really good blocker, heals infinitely, and you can just, you know, outpace aggressive strategies just by opening 1 or 2 Cosmic Youngling. Next we have Sky Splitter, which is a very good card that has been added to Freljord. This should be an auto-include in most Freljord strategies. 2 mana burst speed, give an ally plus 1 plus 3 this round. Huge HP buff. It's also elemental, which we'll touch on in a little bit, but a lot of our spells are elemental, which has synergy with one of our top end cards, which again, we'll talk about when we get there. Invocation of Thunder, 3 mana slow speed spell, draw 1 and summon a sigil. It's also elemental. So yeah, this is really nice. We want to resolve 2 of these at some point, again in the early mid. That way we can play Rond on 5. Scholarly Pioneer, a new card and also a new type of card called an Explorer. 3 mana 2, 3 Challenger, which is pretty good stats. Pick an Explorer spell to create in hand. You get shown all 4 and you can pick any of them. So there's Destroy Units Equipment, which is really good against equipment style strategies like Jax, like Orn, like Kane Aatrox type stuff. Destroy a Landmark, really good in the mirror match because Sigils are landmarks and also against any landmark strategy. Explorer's Blunder, which is like a mini quicksand, really nice against Elusives, Quick Attack, and Overwhelm. And then heal an ally or your Nexus too, really nice against burn strategy, so you have some extra healing on top of a body. Next we have Valhir's Prophet, 3 mana 2-3, when I'm summoned, summon a Sigil, so nice, we get more Sigils, really good, especially on a 2-3 body, you can use that to block, and also it doesn't die to Avalanche, which is good. Speaking of Avalanche, deal 2 to all units. Really nice if the opponent develops more than 2 units. Avalanche hitting 3 or more is ideal. Love that, it's also elemental. 
Winter's Touch for Mana Gem. Really good to ramp up. Uh, also elemental, and it becomes a card draw in the late game once you hit 10 mana. It's a one mana draw one, which is really cool. Triple Sunburst, really good single target removal. Want to use this as first action on anything, even if the opponent has like buffs and stuff like that, does not matter. As long as there's no spell shield in play, Sunburst will come in and kill whatever the opponent has, as long as it's 6 HP or less, no matter how they buff it. Uh, again, aside from spell shield. So yeah, Sunburst, really good single target removal for Targon. Uh, very cheap, very efficient, kills all the early mid game champions that it needs to. Then we have Rond, the Magma Serpent, 7 mana, 8, 6, summon 3 sigils. So again, we want to play 2 sigils, play this on 5. This will summon 3 sigils, allowing us to play Volley Bear on 6. That's pretty much all it does. It's also a really big beat stick, so that's nice. Seismic Shard, 7 mana, slow speed spell. If you behold a Titanic ally, remember behold is if it's in hand or in play. So as long as we have our big dudes in hand, that's good. I cost 3 less, deal 7 to a unit, which is absolutely incredible. It's also elemental, so that's good. It's a 4 mana... Slow speed spell that deals 7 to a unit. Really strong. It's a little bit more damage than Sunburst. However, opponents can like buff things out of it. So definitely keep in mind when you should use Sunburst versus when you should use Seismic Shard. Kind of depends on your mana and it also depends on the matchup if the opponent has buffs or not. But yeah, Seismic Shard is really good. If you're fighting Janna strategies, Sunburst and Seismic Shard both kill her pretty easily. So that's super nice. Uh, really good at winning that matchup. And then we have Volley Bear. On play, play Relentless Storm three times. Each one targets a different random enemy or the enemy nexus if there are no enemies left. So ideally there are three enemy units on the board and he will target all three of them separately. It says deal four to a unit. If it's dead or gone, deal two to the enemy nexus instead, doing a little bit of chip damage. But honestly, just coming down and hitting three different things for four is incredible board clear built onto a basically six drop if we're playing the deck properly and haven't been interrupted. So yeah, we can play Volley on six, wipe the opponent's mid game board and pretty much just auto win a lot of mid game matchups. So that's really, really nice. And then also he's a really big beat stick. Eventually he'll level if you do enough damage, whether you're doing like avalanches to ramp this or his own passive helps with this. Um, you want to get him leveled probably like eight or nine is like the average. And then he becomes super big bear. So he does his on play effect again whenever he attacks. So that's kind of insane. And he also gives all allies overwhelm just like as a passive aura, which is super good. Little side note, if you have Volley Bear and a couple big dudes, make sure you attack with Volley Bear on the far right. That way, your allies will maintain Overwhelm during combat, even if Volley Bear would die in the combat itself, right? If you attack with Volley Bear on the left and then he gets traded into uh, with some damage and stuff like that, then you lose Overwhelm. So make sure you do Volley Bear on the far right. This is a little side note for you guys. But yeah, he is Overwhelm as well, so he just becomes a really big finisher. His champion spell is... Avalanche on crack, 8 mana deal, 4 to everything except for titanic allies, so you also get to keep your dudes nice and healthy as long as they're titanic, so that's super good as well. And then we have Aurelian Soul. He can invoke, give us a celestial to play. He's also a titanic ally, so we can play him for cheap as well. He's also super good because he can give us a level up win con where he's leveled and then all our celestials are free, the opponent has to surrender. He's just a nice, really big top end option. Speaking of top end options, we also have She Who Wins, I mean She Who Wanders. 10 mana, 10, 10, regen, play, obliterate all units with 4 or less power in play and in hands. This does hurt your own, but for the most part, as long as you're not getting harsh wind, uh, this should be fine for you. Don't gotta worry about that too much. Basically, obliterating the opponent's hand will spell instant loss for them, especially if you play She Who Wanders on like 7 and the opponent really needs their hand to like close out the game. Really good, obviously, this has been a really strong card in Frelly Road Ramp decks, it continues to be in this one. And running us out, we have Clash of Giants. Remember how I was talking about elemental spells earlier? Well, that's because this card gets discounted the more elemental spells and skills you play. Summon two random Titanic followers, so really big dudes from any region, you can just summon them. I've seen Pharaon, I've seen Shenbo, I've seen a lot of goofy stuff come out. So yeah, you just get like two really big dudes, and it's a really fun card to resolve. It doesn't have an animation, sadly, but it is super sick anyways. Little side note as well, elemental skill, that includes Volley Bear. So Volley will cast his skill three times so that's already three discount for this as long as you're playing the ramp and you're also playing the avalanche and stuff like that this card will be cheap enough to play and resolve in the late game so a couple cards to think about you could definitely swap out sunburst for falling star i think that's completely fine there is a condition though where like sunburst is better against bench units like janna who never attack falling star is cheaper but it only works on enemies that have attacked because we don't have stuns in here so there is a little condition to falling star so definitely um 
Take what you will and pick which one you like more. Both good options. You can also run some kind of combination of Harsh Winds and also Buried and Ice. Those are super good options as well. You could probably get rid of Clash of Giants if you think that's redundant. Or you can take out Scholarly Pioneer. And if you don't really care about the flexibility or if he's not super useful in a lot of matchups, he's more of a tech card anyways. And then you can also get Harsh Winds and Buried and Ice in here and you'll be good to go. Definitely play with the numbers as long as you maintain like the removal, the Sigil cards, the Youngling, and also the Rond and Volley Bear. That's kind of like all that matters. You can definitely play with some things here and there, but this is a very, very strong core and a very easy to play version of the deck that I'm going to hard recommend for everyone. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's some live commentary games so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. All right, for this one, we have Annie Janna, which is like a wildfire spam deck. We should be okay into it. Naturally, we're like decent into Janna because we have good single target removal and also Volibear comes down and kills her too. We have Avalanche for early Annie. We have two Sigils. We have Seismic. Honestly, it's just a perfect hand. This is everything we need. And there's Volibear, so now all we need to find is Rond at some point, which we have plenty of time to get there. Like, we're just completely bing chilling. Aesol, hello. A little bit of top end. In case we somehow get to the late game and need Aesol. Um, yeah, I'm down to pass this. Gale Song Call. Burb. Hello, Burb. Wildfire. I'm down to just first action avalanche, I think. Because this Annie's already a little scary. Actually, no, that's perfect. Pioneer. And then we'll also grab Excavation in case they're playing Sunken Temple, which is a Janna Landmark Synergy card, which updrafts everything. That way we can just outplay that. Dude, Pioneer is such a Giga Chad. Kills Annie, and also gives us Sunken Temple removal. So insane in this deck. He's so good. All right. And if they play Janna, I just kill Janna. Yep. You pulled, and I Both champions so easy to answer here. Uh, yeah, let's just Seismic Shard. This could be FFable, by the way. And the rest of the game looks so simple. It's just Sigil, Sigil, and then we'll play Volley for cheap. Them. Wildfire number two. Ow. A little rude, but okay. Let's play this. Invocation, draw a card. Avalanche. Alright. Avalanche is always good. Can't hate on that. And then I want to play Valhir and Float 2 for Excavation in case they play Sunken Temple this turn. Because Sunken Temple is 5 cost, unless it's updrafted, it goes down to 4 cost. So, we're just going to make sure we hold our 2 mana for it. And then we can open attack. There's actually some merit to just accepting their pass, too. I kind of like accepting the pass. I don't get a lot of value from my attack. CBH. I think messing up their turn is, like, way too good here. Iascala? Oh, man, I'm not on another single target removal card. I wish I had Sunburst. If I had Sunburst, we'd be bing chilling. This could be a double avalanche angle. And then just play Volley next turn. Um, Let's do a single avalanche and then feel out the rest of the turn. Because Volley will kill this. Disintegrate, killing my 2-3. Okay, that's fine. I'll just commit the second avalanche then, I think. We'll see, hold up. Hmm. Hmm. I'm doing a big thonk. Big, big thonk. We'll just volley bear. First action volley will just kill him. Yeah. I'm glad I committed one avalanche to force disintegrate though. That's so big for us because then our volley bear is a bit safer. Because we can't actually deal with Disintegrate. Block. An 8-7? Holy guacamole. Alright, we attack. We... I guess we can resolve this. 
show us removal, we'll sky splitter. No problem, right? Go three. Easy. Sky splitter. And now we're just kind of chilling. More sky splitter. I kind of wish I was on more single target removal, but I mean, the ping protection's funny if the rest of their hand is just damage. No temple. I guess they don't get to play temple this game though. Uh, Divine Whirlwind again. Um, at this point, I think that's fine, and I just replay Volibear, no? Because I need something to do next turn anyways. Wildfire, sure. I really have nothing to do. Nothing on 9 either, other than another volley. Pass. Because they're like refusing to play cards. Volibear, number 2. At 6 damage to face. We have more sky splitting. We still have excavation. And now we have a fresh volleyball that's undamaged. Ah, oh, disintegrate. Number 2. Sounds about right. Another whirlwind. Okay. Can't do much about that, Captain. Janna. You are not alone. Um. Yo. Relian Soul, maybe. And then we can get the Great Beyond. As long as I don't die to double wildfire, I should win this with Great Beyond being. An elusive spell shield unit. Now they'll pay attention. So yeah, I'd like to just threaten lethal right away. So we're gonna do that. You can't double wildfire me, right? It's just one action. So we just win. That's like the fastest way to do it without dying to the burn. Because they have to spend every action to play wildfire. And for this one, we have the true mirror match. However, the big difference is I have Storm Dragon, Aureli, and Soul to match, and they do not, so it should be a skin diff. In the mirror match, we just want Sigils, and we want Volley. Volley's so good, especially as an interaction to their Volley, because they play Volley, we play Volley, and then after that we Seismic Shard. Whoever plays Volley first tends to lose in this matchup from what I've seen. But we want to make sure we're on ours so that we can react. We're both going to pass the first two turns probably, yes. I want to play my draw card. We could also ramp. My ramp's pretty good. Just to be uh, one mana faster. Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll ramp and pass here. Float two mana. I don't really care about Cosmic Youngling. Yeah, we're going to play these. I need to get into a Titanic ally. Like any of them. So the draw card's going to be nice. And do this. We also have Pioneer, so we can win the mirror match by excavating their sigil. Again, we want to do it when we need to stop Rond or after Rond is summoned. Um. Huh. Yeah, we can just. That's a nice pass for me, though, man. That's such a nice pass. I want to take it rather than play a unit and then let them play something else. That's such a beautiful pass for me. Um, and then we can rond, actually. Yeah, we can rond. Because we ramped and then had one sigil, so now we can rond on five. Seismic shard. Yeah, I'm not on sky splitter, so that makes sense. I lost my rond. Now give me my volley. Oh, I'll take Aesol as well. <laughs> we can just play Aesol on turn seven then. <laughs> Wait, that's insane. Yo, Supernova Destroyer Living Legend. All good. We can have the Destroyer as another unit. Although I do like Supernova just being able to obliterate their Volley Bear. Because they don't have spell protection. Unless they're magically running, like, I don't know, spell shield for some random reason. But I cannot imagine that being the case. 
Okay, we got the destroyer anyways. Um, I think I want to play a pioneer. And then also grab excavation so we can destroy their landmark in case they want to play Rond. We're also on 8 mana so we can do seismic shards. All kinds of good stuff. Sunhawk, that's interesting. That is interesting, my friends. Um, okay then. Hmm. Hmm. A couple things we can do. I like attacking. But I also like Cosmic Youngling. And I also like Avalanche. There's a lot of nice stuff here. Not just Avalanche. Low key. Get my Clash of Giants cheaper. Get my Aesol level up points going. Not Aesol. Holy Bear level up points. Yeah, because there was no world where we could probably get away with trying to level volley, right? Cool. This seems fine. And... Oh, let's do a uh, Youngling. I want to float too for excavation in case they're on another sigil. I don't want them to be able to play volley next turn, and I also don't want them to play Ace for cheap. So what we're going to do, check this out. Boom, attack. Big value. They're going to go into 8 and then they can play volley. We do not want that. Now's a good time to destroy the sigil. We just have to do a little bit of counting. And it looks like they want to volley bear me anyways because they put my Aesol down to 4. There's a lot of avalanches that turn. On it. It's good. And we're on volley. That's also good. Um, I'm pretty sure we Rond. Again, whoever plays Volley first loses. I'm down to just go for this. That doesn't threaten my Aesol level, though, does it? Eight, nine. Nope. Okay, we'll play Volley then. Who dares challenge the wild? Because of Aesol level, I think I'll just go for it. As Ron puts us one away. Yep, got him. That's how you win the mirror match right there. Let's go. And for this one, we have another Volley Bear deck. This is a matchup you're going to see quite often. There's going to be a lot of Volley Mirrors. And what I think is really important is the Explorer card in the mirror. That way we can kill the opponent's landmarks. But for now, let's uh, get rid of Clash of the Giants. We'll try to draw that later. We want Ron because that's part of our uh, mid-game combo. And it's also a turn 5 unit as long as we're uh, playing right. So let's go ahead and mulligan these as well. I don't think we need Cosmic Youngling in the mirror match. Nice. We have Ron into Volley. Now we just need two Sigils. Got the youngling back, that's nice. I love his art too, Volley Bear looks so cool. Seismic Shard, that's really good. That way we can snipe Janna right on her summon. We even killed Janna through one of the 1-3 uh, <laughs> buffs, that's crazy. Updraft to draw one, sounds good. Let's play Cosmic Youngling. Um, I'm down to trade this. Get one damage on them, two damage on us, but they can't execute the Cosmic Youngling this turn, so it'll just heal back up. One little quick damage. Heal the three, sounds nice. Then we can play a ramp card. Sigil, nice. Also on a 2-3 body, so we can use that. And again, um, the round end damage for Volley Bear, right, needing to level, Actually works for combat too, so we want to attack at least a little bit. Looks like they got Explorer's Excavation so they can destroy a landmark. That is a little bit cringe. But yeah, we want to swing, get some damage in. Bonk. And then if they play Janna on 4, we're just going to match Janna with Seismic Shard and kill her. If not, we could do Avalanche maybe. It kind of just depends what they want to do. We can play nice and reactive. They could also spend two mana to kill my landmark, which is not super useful. There's Janna, yep. You want to kill Sigil when it's at two, or after Rond is summoned. Those are like the main times, so in case you guys are playing the mirror match, keep that in mind. You want to use uh, the landmark removal when this is at two, or when uh, Rond is summoned. Let's go ahead and just open attack, probably. We can do both. And then we have Seismic Shard, Winter's Touch. We can just play nice and reactive still. Doesn't really matter. 
<laughs> Still have this in their hand. We have to be a little mindful of it. Okay, they're using it now. That's completely fine. We do not care about that, like, at all. We'll go ahead and just use Winter's Touch. Ramp us up. That way we can go into Ron's next turn, right? Because we're going to be on 7. Hmm? Round 6 for them, round 7 for us because we ramped a little. So now we have Ron into Volley. <laughs> Iascala. Okay. That's pretty annoying, actually, but maybe it's fine. Because if we do first action Volley, he might just snipe it outright, which would be really good. There's no way he whiffs, guys, right? There's no way. Gale Song Call. Okay, now he might whiff. Because now there's some burbs on the field. Volley has a solid 50 50. Avalanche would be so nice, too, to just kind of like clean this up, but no, I just want to play Volley as soon as possible, I think. Oh, wait, we could also do She Who Wanders. Wait a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> or they attack. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, have at it. Pop, pop. This puts them down to three units, so that means Volley is a guaranteed hit on the Iascala. Fine by me. Mystic Shot, that's a crazy Mystic. Kind of unnecessary, I would think. I guess that means they want to play Volley, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense. They can't play Volley yet. I don't really know what that Mystic Shot was for. Uh, however, there is a lot of merit to just playing She Who Wanders. My main issue with that is if they play Harsh Winds, which I'm pretty sure they run in here, then my She Who Wanders will obliterate herself and also my Rond. So we're going to avoid that. Because of the combat playing out the way it did, they have three units on the board, so Volley is a guaranteed hit on all of them. So that's nice. Even if he wasn't, I guess I could lead the turn with Avalanche and then play him, because we have the mana to do so. But this is a nice first action Volley here. Sky Splitter. Yep. Double cast too, so that's a lot of HP. Might be able to finish it off with Seismic Shard, because it goes down to like, what, six? Oh, hello. Another Sky Splitter. Yeah, it goes to six. That is fine by me. Gale Song Call, more birds. Infinite birds, so it would seem. But yeah, let's just go ahead and kill Iascala here, and then attack with these. We have Volibear leveled round end, so that's nice. Yeah, we can do this. No attack with Youngling. We'll attack with Ron because it dies to our own avalanche anyways because I want to threaten their board as much as I can. Another Mystic. Again, another random Mystic. I guess now it dies to their volley if they have one. Nice level up animation. Maybe we'll see their purple one as well. Because it is safe to assume they have volley. But we have another one, and that's what we'll be playing this turn, too. Flash? Oh. Oh my goodness. 8-6. Eight, 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, you know what? That's really not all that terrifying. Neither of them have quick attack, so that's cool. I guess I could just play Ron and kill Mind Splitter. Or I could sack Volley and then replay Volley. All pretty fine options. I'm just gonna play the Ron. If my Volley's living, I might as well keep him alive, right? So we can kill Mind Splitter and then also chump block the Sacred Protector or just take 8 to face. I don't think we're really threatened that much. Go to 9? Yeah, I think we're okay with that. I can't imagine something super terrible happening to us. Heal up. And then we can play... Hmm... Pioneers? Cool. And then we can attack. I'm a little worried about their Volley Bear development in case they top deck them. It could just be open attack. Yeah, I like open because we get the 
play effect, and also we get a new Volley Bear that's full HP. Oh, I did the goopy thing. I attacked with Volley Bear on the left, even though I said not to do that. Um, Goofy, Goober, yeah. Probably won't matter too much, though. Let's go ahead and play... Oh, I see what you want to do. You want to kill my Sigil. Well, that's not going to happen. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what else you have in that hand there. Ah, ha! There was something. Oh, Janna! Hey, yo! We found their second Janna. Cool. And then an 1110 bird. That's also fine. That's funny. They have more landmark removal. Yeah, they probably have even more landmark removal. Just infinite landmark removal. I think we just play Aurelian Soul. Then do... Obliterate or Great Beyond. The Unit. I don't really care about this too much. I just want to make sure I can kill this bird. Grab 1010. I have to block with Aesol. That's completely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I want. Because I just want to play Volley Bear next turn. Volley this turn would not have been like that great. I would have to sack my Volley into the bird. So I feel like Aurelian Soul was just the best. You didn't even grab, hello? Why are you not grabbing me? I get to keep a soul? Alright, I'll keep him. I think that the grab was correct. Alright. Heal. Mm hmm I'm just gonna play Great Beyond actually now. Because of his last card, like harsh wins. We just win. With Sky Splitter. Hooray! So, yeah, the main things to keep track of are actually your sigils and also having a mix of early and mid game removal. So, it is important to master the mulligan phase, making sure what cards you need in your hand for specific matchups, what ones to pitch, what to go for, where it's like reasonable to keep Rond and Volley both in your hand versus when you need to just hard mulligan for avalanches, stuff like that. I think mulligan is really important with this deck. Other than that, the in-game decision making is super simple. That's why I think this is going to be a very good like beginner friendly deck. It teaches you control fundamentals, you get to play avalanche, you get to play single target removal, you get to play really big dudes so you're rewarded for playing the removal uh, correctly, and it's pretty easy to keep track of like the sigils, when to play Rond, when to play Volley, it's all just really kind of like a nice deck. So this is going to be one of the ones that I recommend, especially when you're getting into Volley Bear. Definitely go Targon second because it is a natural pairing. It's super easy, goes well together, very cohesive is a good word for it. And then you can start mixing things up, playing like the Volley Bear plus uh, Galio route and play those formidable units. You can do like Volley Bear Shadow Wiles. You can do Volley Bear Ionia, Volley Bear Janna. I've seen so many different takes on Volley Bear so far. But uh, again, Targon is like the pushed pairing. That's kind of what they were released with. So they work really well together. This is a really nice deck. I think, again, maybe take out Clash of the Giants for like two Buried in Ice or two Harsh Winds. Try to fit both, maybe. Because Clash of Giants is a meme card. I have it in here because I just have the extra epic and I think it's fun to play. But if you're tight on resources, you don't you can't craft it, then you don't have to. Just play Harsh Winds instead, of course, and you'll be in a great spot. I almost never resolve Clash of Giants anyways. It's very extra. It's literally just like for fun top end. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, gameplay highlights, and meta reports in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!